<clears throat> well, good morning. Glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Uh, so anyway, uh, Monday, I think it was Monday or what, a couple of days ago, somewhere, sometime this week, put, put it that way. We know that for sure. Um, I got this thing out and tried to make a video, but I, I don't know. I was in kind of a weird mood that day for some reason. We was having some issues over here um, with somebody stealing medication out of the box or the mailman not being really, really good doing his job right and, and losing the medication. Um, so I was kind of like in a bad mood, I guess. And so I thought, well, you know, I deleted it. I looked at it and I go, no, I can't put that on. I'm, I'm Goodness gracious. I need to be more uh, humble and more at um, in a contented state. I mean, I don't care how bad it gets. There's no excuse for a Christian to be not content. No excuse for that. I can say that right now. Um, uh, as you know, I'm not really a mandolin player. I'm not really a fiddle player, but I get on there and try. I mean, I was, I don't know if anybody that's watching this uh, production uh, remember, uh, in the state of Maine anyway. If you're in the state of Maine and you're old enough to remember, let's put it that way. Um, there was a show that, that ran for a long, very long time. I can't remember uh, the whole span of its production. Um, it was, you know, more than a decade anyway. Um, it was very popular because uh, <clears throat> anybody could go on there and play, whether they could play or sing or not. They could still go on. It was an amateur thing. And it was called, back in its original day, Frankenstein. Uh, jamboree but then uh, i guess at some point uh, dick stacy bought it out and um he turned into dick stacy's country jamboree and um he would advertise dick stacy's chevron fuel mat <laughs> in his gassy hands you will we'll pump the gas and our hands will smell gassy well uh, you know um i need to uh play for the joy of playing um but anyway uh i'm not really uh a mandolin player or a violin player. Well, I wouldn't really consider myself much of a guitar player, really, compared to some of the people I've heard. Um, as much as an amateur could, could go, I guess. Um, don't ever want to let playing guitar and music go to your head. Like, you know, pride is never never a good thing. Um, so anyway, um, let's see if we can get this up in there. The straps bugging the you-know-whats right out of me this morning. Let's see. Oh, see if that'll work. Yeah, we'll try that. Well, glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit. Um, uh, just because I'm an Orthodox Christian don't make me perfect by any means at all. So I would never, uh, ever um, try to give that impression that I think that I'm somehow perfect or that I'm free of sin. In fact, the book of uh, John, I believe somewhere in the book of John, of one of the epistles of John talk about uh, anybody who denies that they have sin are really uh, liars. Um, Nobody is free of sin, uh, including myself. So uh, <clears throat> it's not for me to be judgmental. Uh, it's for me to warn, though. Um, you know, uh, what, what most people fail to remember at various times in their life is that um, when they after they passed on from this life and gone and gone, that uh, they're going to meet the Lord. There's no doubt about it. Whether you're ready or not, you're going to meet the Lord, um, and um, He is going to be your judge. Uh, he has plainly said in the Scriptures that <clears throat> the Father, God, the Father in heaven, had turned all authority over to Him. He's going to come back and be your judge and my judge. Um, so we want you to be ready. I want everybody to be ready to meet Him. Um, and whether we're ready or not, we're going to meet him anyway, because he's going to be the judge. Uh, he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. You know, he came as a lamb um, all the way up through until he was sacrificed. But there's no more sacrifice for sin. Once he was sacrificed, it was paid in full. Uh, I know that's kind of a heterodox or a Protestant term. It was paid in full. Uh, like we owe some kind of debt. Well, we really do owe God a debt. We owe a debt because uh, the Lord give us life. And um, what have we done? We squander it. And... Um, we disobey his commandments. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And he who says he knows no sin is a liar. And so, um, 
want to say that, you know, just because I'm an Orthodox Christian don't make me any better than any other person who calls himself a Christian. Um, see, we want to keep in mind, though, that um, if you, we claim to be a follower of Jesus Christ, that means we're a follower, which means that uh, we have to bear fruit. This I don't know about, you know, the, I keep hearing these uh, <clears throat> people speak about uh, once saved, always saved. Well, that's true. If you don't walk away from God, no matter how many times you slip and fall, you don't walk away from God, but you continually press forward to God, to Christ, then you will not lose your salvation. You, you, you're going to meet, everybody's going to meet God in a, some state of imperfection. There's no doubt. <clears throat> it's not the imperfection that's the problem. It's uh, who are we going to, be, who's going to be our God? Is it going to be the Holy Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, or is it going to be ourself? Who's going to make the decision on our final fate? Because if we're putting ourselves ahead of God, and our desires and our wants ahead of doing what God wants, then when we meet Jesus, we're going to meet him. Then it may not be a good thing. So I um, just want to encourage you. Uh, it doesn't matter to me uh, if you're a Baptist or if you're a Pentecostal, as they call themselves, or Orthodox. If you're willing to confess Jesus Christ publicly and willing to bear the fruit. <clears throat> In other words, he says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. You're willing to, and we, what did he command us? I mean, he, I, I know, I know the story of this parable where he said that one man owed him, uh, uh, owed, owed the master that he worked for him a very big debt. And uh, the master forgave him all that. But then he went out and found somebody that owed him a little bit and grabbed him by the throat and said, pay me all you earn, all, all that you owe me, or I'm going to have you um, put in jail. And so he went and did that. He went and the guy goes, please have mercy on me. Just the same in the same manner that he asked the Lord of the vineyard mercy. And uh, he said, no, I'm not going to have mercy on you. You go to jail and you stay there until the debt's paid. Now, the master heard about this. The servants are very grieved and went and told, reported to the master how he treated his fellow servant. And the master was very angry with him. said, you wicked servant, didn't I uh, forgive you all that debt? And then you can't forgive this man a little bit? So you're going to go and you're going to pay everything you owe me. So that's the thing right there. Um, he, Christ Jesus is the master. And when we meet him, <clears throat> we have to let go of other people's... Uh, if other people have, have done harm to us, we have to let it go. We have to let it go and drop it and forgive them that debt. Because uh, they owe us a debt, we have to forgive it. If we forgive their debts, then the Lord will forgive our debts. Simple as that. Uh, forgive them their trespasses, the Lord will forgive us our trespasses. So if I know uh, of anybody who I've held a grudge against who have done me harm and wrong, then I want to make that right with the Lord. I want to let go of all that and forgive that person and, and because nobody is perfect. I mean, everybody wants to hear that. Nobody's perfect when you get into trouble, but sometimes people don't want to hear that when uh, when they when they get the upper hand. See, we can't let the devil um, tempt us and bring us to disobedience because that's what what's happening. So, anyway, with that, with that, glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit.
Well, yeah, let's see if we can change that tone a little bit and make that a little bit sharper. Just having a little fun here. Uh, <clears throat> uh, in all, we want to give glory to the Lord because uh, the Lord is what gives us these talents. Uh, we just, you know, uh, we have a propensity for things, that, and especially if they're godly things. I mean, they're things that are not wicked. Like playing music is something that comes; it, it, it touches the heart. It goes deep into the soul. That's why I believe music. There's a dangerous element to music. Um, that if we're not listening to the right words. And, and, and we, we, you know, we're, we're feeding the soul with music. So let the music be glorifying to God. That's all I can say. And let the, God bless you today and have a wonderful day. Glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen.